Oh, let's talk about Yeezy actually. Let's go with that. I think he did he announce it. I think he announced it last minute, didn't he? I think he probably announced it on a Friday, so not a lot of people had a chance to actually gather their thoughts and head out. But Kanye decided to present Yeezy Season Eight at Paris Fashion Week. This is off the back of uh, the show. I'm gonna say the other day, right? The 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 Sunday service show that happened as well. So this kind of coincided with that. So he decided to kind of wrap everything in one and decide to kind of present some last minute ideas and stuff that he's been having with Yeezy. It's been quite quiet on the Yeezy season sort of front. We haven't seen that much from them. They've sort of like been keeping stuff in house, maybe developing it and building out the brand a little bit more. But um, the overall presentations that happened year on, year out, year in, year out kind of died down. I'm not too sure he's producing anymore. I remember the footwear is still with Adidas, but maybe the Yeezy is kind of brought in house with his ranch in Wyoming and his design studio in Calabasas. So that probably might be a reason behind it. But it's been a bit of a rejig in how they've been presenting stuff. But we've seen a lot more footwear coming out. We've seen obviously a lot more clothing in terms of the stuff. We've seen Yeezy supply dropping bits and pieces here and there. But it's all been a bit weird, isn't it? The stuff has been going on so far. But um, there's uh, the show happened the other day. It was live streamed on Yeezy.com. They had obviously the appearance of Northwest performing a little rap song that she put together, which is, you know, a little bit uncomfortable having to watch a six year old trying to rap on stage, you know, in front of thousands of people. Um, it makes you think, you know, I guess they've decided as a family probably to kind of just include her in the whole reality TV thing and kind of put her front and center of celebrity life, which is, you know, probably a decision you have to make as a family. So you can't really judge that, but you do get the feeling you you do get the feeling that sometimes they don't really have a choice in it they kind of just get thrust in the limelight because of course they're their parents they have the authority and i guess once they reach an age where they can make their decision they probably will step back i think i remember hearing a story about willow saying the same thing where she was doing that whoop your hair song and i think um she got signed to somebody and then she was meant to go on tour and then she kind of backed out last minute because she wasn't comfortable doing it anymore um, and I think Will Smith her dad said she had no choice she had to go and do it because she promised she would do the show in it he can't let people down and the next day I think she made a story about how she just shaved her head right I think she said that right let me see if I can find a video actually about it because I think that's quite a good um, sort of like backdrop to give on the whole like uh, Northwest rapping on stage which I don't have an issue with because of course you know she, she's got great uh, lineage in terms of Kanye West and Kim in terms of being in front of camera so I'm pretty sure she won't be shy to do the job but it's just you know I'm not sure how intelligent it is to have a six year old uh, standing on stage, like, you know, exposing us to that level of scrutiny in, in public. I think it's a bit weird. Uh, but let me see if I can find it. Uh, Will Smith. He spoke about it. Will Smith. Willow. Whip your hair, right? Whip your hair or something. Let's see if I can find it. Whip your hair. There's a little clip what he talked about. He spoke about um, why she did it. Where is it? Will Smith. See if I can find it on Google. Is it on here? Yeah, this is the one. Mutiny, right? There you go. Will Smith took years to forgive Will for how he handled. Yeah, so here it goes. This article from BuzzFeed that kind of speaks a little bit about it, right? Um. So. This is from BuzzFeed that speaks about the issue. Um, so it says here, uh, Will Smith revealed that it took, Willa Smith says it revealed it took years for her to forgive her dad for how he handled her early fame. Um, if you cast your mind back to 2010, you'll probably remember how Will Smith and Jada, and Jada Smith, 10-year-old daughter, shot to fame with her song, Whip My Hair. Um, however, Willa Smith has now confessed that the Whip My Hair era was actually an extremely tiring, uh, trying time for the family and something she's still processing. Uh, speaking on the most recent episode of Real Table Talk, Willow revealed that her father Wills was so harsh during her early career that it took years for her to forgive him. When her mum Jada asked whether it, that there was anyone in her life that she had to forgive, Willow said, I definitely have to forgive you and daddy for that whole with my hair thing. It was mostly daddy because he was so harsh at certain times. He was like a couple of years trying to gain trust for not feeling like I was listened to or no one cared what I felt during the time. And Willow admitted feeling guilty for not really knowing which direction her career should have taken back then. Um, she said she had to forgive myself too I feel guilty this isn't the first time Willow has addressed them in Thomas' early days in her career in fact during a previous episode of the show she admitted that Will and Jada had failed to prioritise musical growth and knowledge and that she ended up self-harming Jesus Christ Willow said um, you and daddy should have been like okay we are 
we value her musical growth and knowledge more than her popularity. After the tour and the promotion and all that, they wanted me to finish my album. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. And all that kind of settled down. And I was like, kind of a low. I was listening to a lot of dark music. It was just a crazy. And I was plunged into a really black hole and I was cutting myself. Bloody hell. But yeah, so I thought that was kind of a bit of a cautionary tale as of how to handle it. But you probably can't compare the Smiths with the Kardashians because, you know, for instance, like, you know, their entire fame or popularity has been centered around the idea of them selling um, access to their family to the public in some way, say, perform. So maybe it's a completely different thing, but I don't know. I thought that was a bit weird. But anyway, um, that aside, the clothes themselves look quite cool. Look very awesome. I like the shapes of them. I like the fact that he's kind of uh, created this entirely immersive world where he's probably uh, taken some cues or some lessons from what Rick Owens has done in the past in terms of uh, creating a world within a world uh, where essentially you don't need to ascribe to, I don't know, uh, trends or themes that are happening within this kind of society in order to kind of be current. You can just keep creating in your own little way. I remember Rick Owens saying the same sort of thing where he doesn't actually sketch he just like drapes clothes and then makes shapes and different patterns and use different materials and then kind of form his collection around that. Maybe around like a whole theme. Maybe there's a theme that kind of ties it together, but there's no like initial, there's no like, oh, I need to make a chore jacket or I need to make a, you know, a, some cargo pants. It's just about what fits within his world, what fits within his kind of avatar of a person and then try to make some outfits or try to make some looks that kind of fit into that overall theme. And you get a similar sense with what Kanye is doing with Eden Season 8. And yeah, for the most part, most of it looked incredible. I love the fact, I love the wool trousers that I think were sourced from the sheeps that he has in his ranch in Wyoming for the most part. Um, again, loads of life's real freeform shapes. I read somewhere that it was about servicing or clothing the people that work within the service industry. Um, um, or it's service or service industry or workwear industry or whatever it may be. I'm not too sure how you know how kind of functional a crop top is or those long pigtails but again i love the approach i love the minimal hair and makeup the braids and the hair the little simple crop tops obviously the footwear is super incredible loads of really interesting shapes that he's kind of evolved from the easy line but the, again the materials the color palettes the shapes is all really well done um very tasteful um i think most of the models were walking at a completely slow pace there was this weird dome shape that he's used previously from this architect who i forgot his name who he's a big fan of something in the mirror or something um there was weird music soundscape going on in the background that sounded like real car horns beeping in the background that were forming this little weird score happening which might have something to do with the fact that the i think one of the main roads that is on the side or that intersects through kanye's ranch is pretty popular and is a, the sound of the horns beeping in the background that's part of that not too sure but again just a very immersive very uh personal look at what yeezy has kind of evolved to and if you look at if you think about if you think back to like the first collection he presented in paris first week and you think to what he's presented now you could obviously see that there was something in it. i think that's probably why people are so harsh to virgil and give him such a hard time because for as much money and time has been invested in his brand and for as much longer as he's going for it which is probably a bad example but it doesn't seem to it, it it doesn't appear to have gotten any better you don't necessarily feel that there's like anything there unless he kind of as a Vanessa Friedman pointed out in the other article unless he's building on other things it feels as if like he doesn't necessarily have his own way he doesn't necessarily have his not own way but you don't feel as if there's a world he's creating you just feel like he's just adding on top of things that already exist right which you can quote unquote call polluting the earth in, in one way shape or form but you get the feeling that Kanye even though it's a bit cultish, you do feel like there's a little bit of a, you know, um, Waco feel towards it, right? That he might, you know, he might want everyone to jump on some, you know, he might be one of the first people to buy, I don't know, a starship from Elon Musk and SpaceX and fly everyone out to some far-flung planet somewhere, right? <laughs> and build his own colony and call himself God and Lord and Savior for the, for, you know, for the first time and make his own rules. At least he has a point of view. At least he has an opinion. That's probably something, right? Even though you might not agree with his political beliefs, you might not agree with his stance on things and how he approaches stuff, at least he has something to say. He's not just like some vanilla, you know, uh, kind of cookie cutter answer. He has a, a definitive kind of point of view, a way of looking at the world, and he kind of presents it to you in a very unfiltered way. And I guess that's kind of the beauty of being able to do things in your own, you know, uh, your own way 
and I th- and, and that's part of the reason why success is so important that's part of the reason why making money is really important especially in this kind of creative industry because once you've made money once you've made your investors money and once the money just keeps coming in you're allowed to do whatever you want and once you're able to do what you want that's when you have real true creative freedom and you can really get into your bag and start really doing some interesting stuff because for the most part most creators are just trying to you know balance both things right that's why people give such a hard time to maybe london fashion week people right or the kids that present london fashion week because most of it is stuff that would never be worn by you know people that consume fashion you know in the general public kind of sense of way um they're mostly stuff that they made specifically for people that are in love with fashion in a particular way but they're not necessarily the buyers of it so there's that balance of being able to provide stuff for the heads stuff for people that are really into it and also be providing stuff for people that shop in selfridges every week so um kind of says has the ability or the fortune that he's been able to supply the mass market with his trainers you know the 350s are, you know probably one of the most popular shoes in the world at the moment they can they kind of sell without any effort and that already kind of allows him or funds all the other stuff he does where he can just you know go crazy and buy out entire vintage stores in the middle of alaska really make some of the clothes and experiment with wool and and all these really crazy materials and you know um get you know uh up and coming designers for senators and martins to design out a piece of him you can really see him kind of really get into his bag and get really creative but one thing i really did like is the sandals i'm not really a big fan of slides but i like the fact that the slides on these are i'm showing another picture of them but they're sort of like they've got like a little kind of hole in the bottom of it so you kind of got this weird sort of like is that my moot do you remember those kind of kenyan shoes that people used to wear that kind of had that weird sort of like um arch thing that kind of like an elephant foot let me see if i can find there's like a little it's like a is it a kenyan is it like a what is it, like a kenyan walking shoe sort of thing is it like an ken is it kenya kenyan inspired walking shoe let's see this it's like a trainer that everyone used to wear that was really popular i remember it being a thing it had like a weird sort of like oh i don't know what what, what the brown was called uh, walking shoes uh, that inspired inspired walking shoes did that come up nope uh, so someone someone will find out if you know the name that i'm talking about in the comments let me know it's like a weird sort of like my like kind of had like a little ramp thing in the middle of the forefoot that you can kind of walk on and i remember they, they being really popular for a time they kind of remind me a bit of the hook it on their own but they're a little bit more rounded but anyway um less than that but let's go back to the collection well, let's, let's go to now fashion as well and get some of our bits and pieces up on there because I think I want to see some of the details to show you some of the sneakers. But let's go back on here. Da, 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 da. Let's go to the collections. Load up there. There you go. Scroll down here. What is this? There you go. Cool. Let's see some of the details too on the pieces that I thought were pretty interesting for the most part. Uh, and then go close up, right? Yep, that's what it looks here. So, yeah, great pieces, lovely crop tops again. Great, um, application of the trousers. I think Kim's wearing quite a few of those trousers too. It looked very well fitted. Um, I love the flares, I love the shape, I love the little crop tops. I'm not sure how workwear inspired they are. The, the puffer vest fins that I think kind has been wearing for the most part look incredible as well. I think he's been sporting them out quite often, more often than not. You've been seeing, I think that's what he wore in his video too of his dad. So that's a pretty cool addition there. Um, the hooded tops that have collaboration with that designer who's actually in CSM who showed during London Fashion Week. So they look really, really, really cool. The boots and shoes look remind me of like the elephant foot sort of things. You remember those? So they kind of have a weird silhouette where they kind of there's the back looks at the front, the front looks at the back. I quite like that shape. Um, again, the all encompassing hood that that some of them look like they are detachable. Some of them look like they attach their jackets themselves. They're a good addition. Um, and again, just stuff that you can. I remember someone saying before that. The idea was like all these clothes that you can essentially just you know after a long day's work just curl up in a corner somewhere and go to sleep um so that was kind of the idea that you know they were completely comfortable stuff that you could be worn inside and outside you can kind of sleep in it live in it and sort of like you know go out there and make the world a better place and again 
just great color work, just great color palettes. The color palette's probably one of the most impressive things about it, right? Which I think he's been talking about for a while, Kanye. The fact that he wanted to design color palettes, and I think this is a really clever way of applying it. I'm not sure what some of the treatments have been on the materials, but some of the colors look come out amazing. It's, it's, there's essentially three diff or four different tones in that one piece here, which is really incredible to see, especially against that dark skin the model looks incredible um, really cool stuff there and just generally just a really really tasteful collection a real good evolution and a really good um kind of signpost to show that you know he's in a much better creative space um you can see that he's happy obviously you know with his family life and everything and like that that amazing wall coat like look at that whoever decides to hopefully just hopefully buy inside the buy and it goes into production because i'd love to see what the retail price of that thing is because that looks insane is that all free form as well? You can see the woman's skin in it, the model's skin through there. I wonder if that's all just been like wrapped around the actual model while she's been like standing there being fitted. That looks incredible. Great stuff. Um, and then obviously Kanye there with North at the end. Um, let me try and see a if we've got pictures of some of the footwear pieces up close and personal to get a bit of an idea of what stuff looks like. Um, the hair looks amazing. I really like some of the pigtail, ponytail sort of like... Um, hairstyles there hopefully we see that kind of come into the zeitgeist with some other brands coming forward you know um the whole straightening and relaxing of black people's hair is kind of going completely out of trend which is great to see um do you, do, you, do you remember how controversial that chris rock movie was about um straightening and and the kind of dyeing your hair and now look at it it's completely changed but yeah nice hoods here great accessories uh puffer jackets of course we ain't got to see no more more, more with the shoes over here so let's just move see if i can get a picture of them actually i remember there was someone that uploaded a really good image of the shoes i thought looked really nice see if i can find it might have been that hidden dude on instagram but there's a really good um images of the shoes i thought looked really really cool let's see if i can get up on here yeah hidden right yeah there you go good as a sign where is it here? Scroll down it. There we go. This guy uploaded it in here. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, there we go. Got a good pictures of the actual shoes here. So, again, I think this is a good summation. Like, they do look quite boxy, especially the, I think there's the ones that North wore at the back right here. That's sort of like weird square shape there. So, they look pretty cool. And you've got, again, these nice little boots here with nice straps, the different kind of soles. I think the soles were something we saw similar in the... Remember that show and picture someone showed of the pictures of the kind of prototypes they used? And I think there were some of these kind of soles that were there. So I think some of them have been kind of applied onto other uppers and stuff. So they're going to be quite popular going forward. Hopefully we see those kind of being reintroduced and looked upon going forward. Um, and then what was your fan? Oh, and then going back to the Vogue thing, actually, there's actually quite a cool little interview towards the end of it. That was quite funny that I thought I'd quite read out to you just as before we end the show. So this is the roundup review from Berg here, written by a one Luke Leach. Did I pronounce his name right? Um, so it goes here. Um, there were several memorable moments at the, this evening at the return of Yeezy in Paris. Uh, Northwest performances at the finale was an assured for any six-year-old. Mm, I don't think you can really critique a six-year-old performance of a rap song. But anyway, to have a member of the EG team threaten to confiscate my camera SD card for taking photographs in a preview of the collection we were invited to hear to report upon, yeah, good luck with that, felt like a cosplay in North Korea. Unholy too. Um, ultimately, however, this was a gathering about the star power of Kanye, his Kim, his kin, and the universe they're shaping. That universe is now centered in Cody, Wyoming, a Buffalo Bill founded town. Um, around which West has circled his wagons and where he holds his Sunday service. Tonight's event was held in Paris' only, na own, Paris's only Oscar Neymar designed building. That's obviously the dome I spoke about earlier. Where there's a huge crowd there, where a huge crowd covered, a huge crowd hovered in a space um, expectant. We were invited into a, a mirror roof dome centered with sage imported from Cody. Amazing again, loads of floss in there. We also imported those massive um, trucks that they used to hand out Yeezys in Chicago. Um, da -da -da, they seem to re they seem related to pre previous Yeezy, but um, evolved more organic, rougher, and texturized. The neutral okra pa palettes remained, but some garments were raw. They were what looked like recycled leather and treated tuffled. Uh, wall in instrumental brow tops and tight pants kind of materialized gold of tooth and parallel to a cluster of us who surrounded him as they do 
uh, with Lucia Prada Milan. Trusting our phones and straining to hear and below his best of what I've reaped up in the coming years. So, West, like, if you take the rubber piece right there, there's only one line in the hood. So it just keeps reworking and reworking to make the shape. It's rubberized. I always been obsessed with Tasma and the whole kind of vibe. So with this, I see a couple of things where it's just the beginning of a new language. The questioner asks an indistinct question. West replies, a lot of times when washes are very rough, it feels very unfinished. I just think about renowned art dealer Axel. He doesn't use a bunch of leather and shiny marble. He's both very wabi-sabi and zen which is cool. A uh, questioner gesturing at the wool and garments nearby. Is wool from your sheep at the, at the ranch? It will be, he said. It's experimental. Question number seven. Question again here. You said you had 700 herd of sheep. Is that true? Yes, we're just looking at different ways of approaching things. I mean, 90% of our collection is muslin. It's muslin. Um, it's just an original uh, fabric. And we're looking at how to create suede looking, suede looking, suede effects. Okay interesting there are you happy to be back at fashion week in paris someone asked he said you know that's a big question i stopped doing merch four months ago which i didn't actually think that was a big which i wonder if that was part of the backlash because he was selling like you know sunday service merch for like 200 dollars a pop i wonder um and then he said uh, and then we started working on the opera and because i wasn't pushing myself enough and we were doing a million dollars a night in merch like flex i remember when i first started doing fashion everyone would just say just do a t-shirt the road just did a t-shirt because people had to do a celebrity comparison and we thought not to do the t-shirt and then i looked up and i was only doing t-shirts so he stopped doing so he stopped and just started focusing on making new shapes, new adventures. The pieces here, some of them are in an infant stage. They're all new interventions, new approaches to appeal, app apparel, sorry. After I did uh, my first opera in Hollywood Bowl, two weeks later, we did another opera and then another and another. So each one of these things is a form of practice. And it's just getting back on the horse, designing, presenting ideas. Because we presented so many things that have influenced color palettes, shapes of shoes and shapes of 350, one of the US's most successful sneakers is becoming the most iconic shoe in the past 15 years um and now we have this new slides that we're doing and we'll also have these new shapes to start to affect our design so it's just important questioner do you imagine you're going to produce this collection yes we will i mean i like the i like the exercise which is great to see that he's just creating for great sake which is nice isn't it um you'd hope people more people would do that actually going forward but of course he's got the luxury to do that because he's got loads of zeros in his bank account I'm going to continue this here. Also, talk about the mass scale. There are 8 billion people on the planet. So, what is mass really? You know, whether it's great, whether it gets you, you know, a big gap as the gap when I was younger, or it's one that's closer than one of the 8 billion. Question Why did you bring the service to Paris yesterday? Oh, to spread the Holy Spirit. That's my job. Okay, we're passing the Christianity shit. And does it relate to the collection? Are you connected? Yes. I, I think about the way I use clothes and think about the way I present the models, you know. Now that I'm married and now that I have two doors and now that I'm saved, it's a whole different type of mentality I represent. Mm -hmm. Um, after this, a bit of confusion with the doors, he exited the sage smelling space, stepped outside, here a greater crowd had gathered, and a collection eventually walked into the indistinct light to be projected upon the facade of the Naimer behind it. Um, ne ne Naimer, yeah, Naimer, Naimer, Naimer. A planned chorus of car horns echoed moodily across the square. The collection was mostly crop tops and pants with sludgy toned downfield jackets. Uh, and quilting irregular places, we segued into the four shortened or judo pants of uh, judo pants, or over, over tops of a pants, and then the woolen pieces that were not west flocking. There, there, and then North came out and sang with great percussion, a great precarious facility. And lo, Yeezy had risen in Paris once more of what to do the omens of the strange season speak. So, yeah, overall, great collection. I liked what I saw so far. I think, again, it's a good representation of where he's at designing-wise. I think if you're able to separate the man from his politics and all his antics, then you'll be a fan of it. If you're not, you won't really give a shit. Um, he's going to keep trucking along, selling his shoes, making money, doing his things. So, you know, it doesn't really matter, does it, at the end of the day. 